mega flares from stars, 10 million times more energetic than the most powerful flare ever observed on the sun. Now this paper is talking about the Carrington event back in 1859. And what Chandra has revealed is that mega flares from stars can be up to 10 million times more energetic than the most powerful flare ever observed here, the Carrington event. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but many people in our community are talking about a super flare or a micronova that may occur on our sun at a regular periodicity at 12,500 years. And tomorrow or the next day, I will debunk that idea once again. But let's get to this paper coming out in May about mega flares from stars 10 million times more energetic than the Carrington event. Now, the long relationship between stars and planets around them, including the sun and the earth, may be even more complex than previously thought. This is one conclusion of a new study involving thousands of stars using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. And here's the paper. By conducting the largest survey ever of star forming regions in X-rays, this team of researchers has helped outline the link between very powerful flares or outbursts from youthful stars and the impact they could have on planets in orbit. Now, just a caveat here. It doesn't have to be youthful stars. This just happens to be the study. And it's baby steps. But the mainstream is catching up to what we're putting down. According to the scientists, their work tells us how the sun may have behaved and affected on the young Earth billions of years ago. But perhaps it may be a paradigm for what happens on the sun all the time. Now, according to one of the lead authors, Kostian Getman of Penn State University in University Park, Pennsylvania, who led the study, in some ways, this is our ultimate origin story. And he's right there. The fact that he uses billions of years to describe these effects is, well, quite telling and pathetic. But the paper you're looking at here is X-ray super flares from pre-main sequence stars. And what they're alluding to here is they have to be early formed stars. There's no way to tell when a star was formed. And anyone in astrophysics or cosmology that claims that they know when a star formed, well, is a little bit off the mark. Now, the scientists in this paper examined the Chandra X-ray data for more than 24,000 stars in 40 different regions. And, and, and the pink areas here are flaring stars. And it appears to be that there's a huge percentage of them flaring currently, which is mind-blowing. They captured over 1,000 stars that gave off flares that are vastly more energetic than the most powerful flare ever observed by modern astronomers on our own sun, which is the solar Carrington event of 1859. Now these super flares are at least 100,000 times. Let me repeat that. The pink dots you're looking at are at least 100,000 times more energetic than the Carrington event. And if we're talking about a mega flare, that would be 10 million times more energetic probably like this little region right here. Now these powerful flares observed by Chandra in this work occur in all of the star forming regions in the universe. But specifically among young stars of all different masses, including those similar to our own sun. They're also seen at different stages in the evolution of these young stars ranging from early stages, when the star is heavily embedded with dust, we just did a video on that, and gas surrounded by large planet-forming disks. 
to later stage stars when planets would have formed already and disks are gone, like our own solar system. Now, the stars in the study have ages estimated between less than 5 million years old compared to our sun's supposed age of 4.5 billion. The team found several super flares occur per week for some of the youngest stars, averaging over the whole sample and about two mega flares every year from these stars. Now, we want to know what kinds of impact, good and bad, these flares have on the lives of the planets, according to the co-authors. But so do we here at our own planet, very close to our own star. Now, over the past two decades, scientists have argued that giant flares can help give planets to still forming stars by driving gas away from the disks of these materials. This can trigger the formation of pebbles and other small rocky material that is crucial for planet formation. Now, this is the accretionary model they're talking about, which is total gobbledygook. Planets don't form that way. They're ejected from stars as the core becomes unstable, in my opinion. And, and certainly not an explosion of material away from the center of the star is going to form anything. But it will strip current celestial bodies of, of many properties, <laughs> like our own planet. So the idea that these super flares create planets is, well, probably wrong. Now, on the other hand, These super flares or mega flares may take away from planets that have already formed like our own by blasting any atmosphere with powerful radiation, possibly resulting in their complete evaporation and destruction in less than 5 million years, according to the study. Now, what we know in our own solar system is that Mars probably got blasted multiple times by our sun and is currently atmosphere free for the most part. It's a very minor atmosphere about 5% equivalent to our own here on Earth. And the Earth has been constantly blasted by our own sun for hundreds of millions of years. And this is proven by the oceanic levels that have reduced by thousands of feet over the last 600 million years. The water had to go somewhere. And because we're in a closed system, because of our atmosphere, the only way it can bl get blown out into space in any mega capacity is through solar flaring. But we'll get to that in a different podcast. So there's a lot to consider as we move forward. Now, the researchers also performed detailed modeling on 55 bright super and mega flare structures and found that most of them resembled long-lasting flares seen on the sun, our own sun, that produce coronal mass ejections. Now, can you imagine a coronal mass ejection lasting for weeks or months well, I can't because it would be rotating around the sun several times. So that would be a very strange effect. But anything's possible. Now, the solar Carrington event involved such an ejection. But that one only lasted for several days. And before we leave tonight, I want to give you the perspective of the scientists that made the paper and it'll just be fun to watch. So let's take a look. The long relationships between stars and the planets around them, including the sun and the earth, may be even more complex than previously thought. This is one of the conclusions from a new study involving thousands of stars using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. By conducting the largest survey ever of star-forming regions in X-rays, a team of researchers has helped outline the link between very powerful flares, or outbursts, from youthful stars and the impact they could have on planets in orbit. This work tells astronomers how the Sun may have acted and potentially affected the young Earth billions of years ago. Lol. The scientists examined Chandra's X-ray data of more than 24,000 stars in 40 different regions where stars are forming. 
Today, our sun is constantly active, giving off flares of different sizes and intensities, depending on where it is in its 11-year solar cycle. Sometimes, a particularly powerful solar storm will directly impact Earth by knocking out communication satellites or disrupting electrical grids. Most of these, however, pale in comparison to the strongest solar storm on record, which became known as the Solar Carrington Event in 1859. The powerful flares in the young stars in this new Chandra study are much, much bigger than Carrington. The researchers found that each young star, on average, experienced a super flare, one that is at least 100,000 times more energetic than the Carrington event, about once per week. They also discovered that these stars had a mega flare, up to 100 million times greater than Carrington, a couple of times per year on average. The scientists detected these giant flares in all of the star-forming regions they observed, and in young stars of all different masses, including those similar to the Sun. By learning more about the frequency of these extremely powerful flares, scientists can better understand the impacts they may have on the planets forming around them. For example, the flares could benefit a developing planet by driving gas away from disks of materials that surround them. This can trigger the formation of pebbles and other small, rocky material that is a crucial step for planets to form. On the other hand, powerful flares could destroy an atmosphere of a planet, removing its protective shield from damaging radiation. Scientists will continue to use Chandra to study these flares to find out what kinds of impact, both good and bad, these flares have on the early lives of planets. So there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. I don't believe all of the gobbledygook they said, but they certainly did step forward. Now the work is, this work is extremely important because it is putting the pieces together that we've been talking about for half of a decade. Now the work is important for understanding flares themselves on planets because there is a trigger. Now, the, unfortunately, the stars they're looking at are in different galaxies other than our own. And each galaxy has its own, well, let's say recumbent cyclicity. One that is driven by the center of the galaxy and the current sheet that it is emanating. So some galaxies emanate current sheets with a higher periodicity of flux. Ours, apparently, in the position we're at in the universe here, and the Milky Way galaxy has a flux of about 12,500 years. So it's baby steps. Now, the team found that the properties of the flares, such as their brightness and frequency, are the same for young stars with and without planet-forming disks. And that means it's an external source. The source of this flaring is external. It doesn't mean if it's a young star or an old star. They both have flaring, super flaring and mega flaring capability. And, and many of the scientists don't know the mechanism because they're working with the standard model which says that stars are thermonuclear reactors with some type of, anyway, I digress. All this implies that the flares are likely similar to those seen on our own sun, which is why we're doing this report. With loops of magnetic fields having both footprints on the surface of the star rather than one anchored to the disk and one to the star. We found that these giant flares are like ones on our own sun, but are just greatly magnified in energy and frequency and the size of their magnetic loops, said the co-author Gordon Garmine from the Huntington Institute for X-ray Astronomy in Huntington. And that's in Pennsylvania, my boyhood home. Understanding these stellar outbursts may help us understand the most powerful flares and coronal mass ejections from our sun. But more importantly, it will help us understand the cosmic catastrophe cycle, which has been hidden from us since the 1950s. The powers that be know about Superflaring from our own sun. 
In fact, that was the entire region reason the Apollo mission was created, to find evidence of superflaring from our sun. And now that the powers that be are gaining more technology and more money than ever before, more secret studies are being unleashed. Like, take a look. Chandra is one of them. We have the Solar Parker probe and many others. And the whole purpose of this is to gain more knowledge of what is about to happen that they already know occurs. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world, while the elites know all the science and they publish all the gobbledygook. You're all burning up. Nothing to see here. Be safe. We love you. Oh, have you heard? We've been shut down on our main channel. Yes. Check out the earlier video and consider becoming a Patreon. Support the work we do. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to see some of the videos that are not blocked and demonetized. And that's a boom. Da -da -da -da.